the, the, the four things that are the obstacles to anyone running on, on uh, our side um, are, you know, particularly uh, insidious and need to be addressed. Um, and, and I think a lot of terrific people are doing that. And of course, my personal favorite is Stacey Abrams, who should be the governor of the and, and you know, it's really gutsy for her to say, look, you know, I'm, I, I, I think she would be the first to tell you it was a terrible blow when she realized all of the shenanigans that were being used against her. Uh, you know, you're running against the guy who's running the election system. How does that work? Uh, and he is refusing to register people that you and your allies have registered and honored when. And so she's standing up to that. I, I think it's going to, uh, you know, who knows? I mean, when I ran in 2016, there were more women in space than there were running for president. Um, two in space. Um, <laughs> twice as many. Uh, and then this last time, you know, We've had enough to field a basketball team, so we're, we're inching forward, we're making progress, and uh, we, just have to, we just have to get behind uh, somebody and uh, make it happen. I also, though, think it's really important to um, continue to support women running at every level, um, running at the local level, the state level, and running for national office, um, and it's been so incredibly uh, moving um, to see Sabrina Fulton run for Miami-Dade uh, Commissioner. Uh, she, she is the mother of Trayvon Martin. Uh, and as she said, every day she's the mother of Trayvon Martin. Um, and every day she wants to ensure that no mother ever has to get the call that she did. And she's running for office. And to diminish um, the importance of who's you know, sitting in the Oval Office, because I think we're painfully reminded every day that it's hugely important who's sitting there. Um, but it also really matters what's happening at the local and state level. Uh, and there are incredible women who are stepping forward kind of into the arena, sometimes because of unimaginable pain. And I hope that um, and if Trump doesn't consume all of the oxygen so that we can kind of pay attention to support, advocate, and amplify women's voices. Talking about that. There's something else that's probably not on my agenda. I don't hear comments. Um, maybe because I'm in sports, I don't think so, though. I always get the feeling, and this is what happens to me personally, so I, and I see it happening to others. When a woman does something, they think we're, we're leading women. So what happens, it keeps our marketplace half as big. I am so, okay, here's what always happens. If, you, if I hear somebody say to a male, thank you for what you did for tennis. I'm just gonna get really on the micro level. Then they'll come up to a woman and they'll say, thank you for what you did for women's tennis. Just throw that out, okay? Because when I do something, I do for everybody. has a breakthrough, oh my gosh, you know, what a great female scientist. I mean, that's part of what is unfortunately embedded in our DNA, where people are categorizing all the time. time. And it's, it's really important not, not to try to deny the differences, um, because those are glorious, and, and we obviously you know, get so much uh, because of those differences, but we want to make sure that we're talking about uh, women leaders uh, that we see them as leaders first. And whether it's in sports or in academia or in business or anything else, 
Uh, I was thinking about that because I write about Shirley Chisholm, who I just loved in every way when I followed her from the very beginning when she started right here in Brooklyn and going into, into Congress. And, and, and she was asked, you know, when she ran for president, uh, it was so audacious. People were like, what, what is this, you know, black woman Congress member running for president for? And she just got out there every day. And she was asked, well, was it harder to run as an African-American or as a woman? She goes, oh, much harder to run as a woman. Because she felt like nobody was really giving her the credit that she deserved for taking what was a huge step at the time uh, to put herself out there as a presidential candidate. And so I, I think that there are many different problems that we all have to uh, keep working on, you know, keep working for uh, the values of equality and justice and, and make sure that people are not uh, sidelined and marginalized. Uh, but it does take examples and it does take energy because it can be exhausting to candidate if you do it year after year after year, and you kind of wonder like, wait a minute, I, I just said the same thing that I said five years ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago. So you need communities of people who are gonna keep supporting you and moving you forward.